Hello and welcome to our Norset Globe Tracker webinar. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Tiago Kubota, Marketing Communication Manager at Norset. For those who might not be familiar, Norset is the leading provider of innovative satellite communication solutions, enabling data, audio, and video for remote and challenging applications. Our products and services include customizable satellite components, portable satellite terminals, maritime solutions, and satellite networks. It is with great pleasure that I introduce you to today's presenter, Customer Support Manager, the engineer Rodrigo Aguilar. With over 15 years of experience on satellite communications, Rodrigo has participated in multiple projects deploying and installing satellite terminals and antennas in fields such as broadcast, military, and emergency services. He is responsible for Norset's customer service team, providing technical support, training, and on-site implementation has a bachelor's in electronics and communications engineering, and he will also be taking questions during our Q&A section at the end of our webinar. Rodrigo, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tiago. Good morning, and uh, welcome to the webinar today. Uh, today, we'll be presenting uh, deep dive into Globetrotter terminals, uh, one of the most popular uh, terminals for uh, Norset. Um, as mentioned, my name is Rodrigo Aguilar, and uh, welcome to the webinar. Um, the agenda for today is going to be a quick introduction on uh, Globe Tracker terminals, uh, key benefits and applications that uh, the terminals are used. Um, also, we are going to talk about the um, all the components and do a live demonstration on uh, a specific one meter Globe Tracker with a 40 watt atom buck. Uh, we're going to uh, do the assembly process, a uh, little uh, demonstration, and uh, the link control software and uh, the um, pointing uh, process. And after that, we're going to open the floor for questions um, from the audience. So let's get starting. Um, today, uh, talking about the glove trackers. The uh, terminal is uh, one of the uh, uh, most flexible ones that we have. It's uh, meant for uh, communications everywhere. And uh, because it, it is a terminal that it's designed for uh, with military standards, um, it's meant to be environmentally friendly and uh, be uh, able to deploy in uh, many different uh, challenging environments. Uh, also, part of the uh, advantages is that e the packaging is designed to be uh, airline checkable in um, most of our um, options to allow it to travel very fast and uh, be able to uh, travel through, through uh, the uh, an airplane and just uh, be a, a easy to. Uh, ship it to a, a different destination and be able to uh, travel or or uh, uh, deploy it in different places. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, uh, options 1 meter, 1.2 meter uh, reflector sizes with uh, multi band capability, X band, KU band, KA band. Um, with only one uh, base. We're going to uh, be talking about that uh, feature that you won't require to have multiple terminals with for different bands. You can use the same uh, terminal with different kits, and uh, that allows the multi-band functionality. Um, very easy to operate. Uh, it's user-friendly. Uh, it comes with our link control software that uh, we're going to go through uh, a quick view of the, how link control works and how easy it is to configure and to, once it's already set up, uh, it's uh, very easy to uh, acquire a satellite and start operations. Um, remote uh, access, you can use either the internal uh, electronics and the computer that comes with it and uh, you are, uh, you'll be in control of all the tools and features and um, um, uh, the uh, functionality for auto acquisition, or you can use a remote 
connection to uh, we use an external computer to control the terminal. Um, as mentioned, a modular architecture, it allows to um, easily pack it in, in smaller cases and uh, be airline checkable, as well as some of the components which are uh, kits for a specific band can allow also to have uh, the flexibility to be multiband. All the components are uh, rough, uh, tuck, uh, it's rugged and uh, lightweight, so it allows to uh, be uh, transported easily. Also durable, uh, the uh, reflector has a carbon fiber, uh, very light, very, um, uh, very uh, hard, but um, we're gonna, during our exercise, we're gonna see it, um, how easy it is to put it together and uh, um, all, all the uh, uh, multiple elements that the terminal has. Um, the terminal can be easily deployed. Uh, normally it takes five minutes for someone who is probably experienced. Uh, if not, uh, that one uh, takes a little bit more time, but uh, not too much. Um, uh, doing this demonstration, I'm going to take a little bit of time just to explain a lot of the key features and um, how um, easy it is it's to put it together. Um, all the motors are automated in uh, the three axes, azimuth, elevation, and polarization. Um, it's uh, compatible with a lot of our NORSAT products uh, for LMBs and box. Um, and uh, it's IP rated 65 and meal standard 10, A10G. Talking about the components, uh, the antenna is one, uh, the uh, component uh, one meter, 1.2 meters. We have uh, the open boom arm that has the motorized uh, polarization um, uh, element, as well as the feed, and it comes with uh, some filters for uh, RF performance as well as with the LMB. Lower boom arm that uh, provides the stability for the upper boom arm as well as the uh, waveguide for the transmission path. The base frame that has all the electronics and all the components for uh, the brains and the heart of all, everything that happens on the back uh, to, to allow all the features to, to work. Um, a universal LMB, that's our common uh, configuration and uh, some uh, customers find it very useful. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. And the support legs to provide some uh, stability and uh, also adjustment uh, for uh, leveling the frame. Um, the RF plate provides the stability for the reflector as well as um, it has the uh, uh, buck. Uh, that uh, the terminal has the elevation motor that has the um, uh, allows the movement on an elevation axis. Uh, all the uh, uh, automation on all on this axis, as well as the azimuth plate underneath that is also uh, motorized and uh, all automated. Um, all the terminals comes with a daylight dis uh, readable display, which uh, is uh, meant for outdoors, uh, environmentally sealed, uh, with a, a rugged boot just to uh, prevent it from uh, getting damaged. Internal power supply with a 500 watts uh, uh, converter. As well, there's another option for an external power supply if uh, the it requires a larger buck than 40 watts. GPS receiver and the bubble level. Uh, for the connections on the baseband, we have the uh, uh, little ground connection in case you are connecting it to um, a generator. Um, also allows 24 volts uh, DC input uh, in case it's connected to a battery or a truck. Um, both can work simultaneously. Uh, it's going to internally switch to the most convenient source and uh, uh, sometimes they, it's used as a backup uh, in, in case you have a kind of a redundancy for um, uh, the um, input. 
you have the uh, go and install buttons. Those uh, are, once the terminal is configured, you have, uh, by the press of a button, it's going to find the last satellite acquired on the, uh, with the go button. And once the operation is finished and you are ready to pack, you press the install button and the terminal is going to go to the parking position and is ready to be disassembled. Um, the Ethernet uh, uh, connections for MNC and the modem data, in case there's an internal modem, uh, there's a uh, different port for all the traffic, and there's another one for uh, the monitoring control for the glove truck itself. Um, again, just when you have an external or internal modem. Um, also, they has the RF connections for uh, an external modem. Uh, it's quite flexible to either use internal or external if you have the option. Uh, the monitor port, a USB port for uh, maintenance in case you have uh, upgrades or backup that has to be uh, done uh, on the internal computer and uh, configuration, or you can export the configuration to another glove tracker with similar um, uh, features, and uh, that way both will have the same configuration. Um, the internal computer uh, comes with a Windows 7 embedded, the link control software uh, that it's developed uh, by Norset, and some tools like a spectrum analyzer and integrated DBVS tuner for uh, troubleshooting and advanced uh, functionality. Um, key elements is, as you have uh, seen, is very uh, portable, uh, fast deploying, very uh, easy to assemble, uh, lightweight, and uh, that allows that uh, terminal to be error uncheckable and uh, with ruggedized cases. Uh, highly customizable in terms of modems and bands for X, KU, and KA kits. Um, uh, compliant with standard A10G and ETSI uh, as well. Um, compatible with all bugs and LMBs from Norsat. Uh, short lead time and uh, survival uh, temperature from or operational range from 40, minus 40 degrees to 60 degrees. Um, uh, wind load resistance up to 50 kilometers per hour operational, 100 kilometers per hour survival. And uh, it's normally used for either military broadcast, media applications, and uh, emergency communications. Uh, talking about options, um, uh, we have developed uh, uh, or integrated iDirect, Comtech, Hughes, and Radine modems for uh, our Glob trackers. Um, also, if uh, you are interested, uh, you can talk about customization. We can uh, see if we can integrate a different type of modem. Uh, that's something that uh, we might provide as well as part of customization for Glob trackers on all bands X, K, U, K, A for one meter and 1.2 meter dishes. Um, talking about uh, bucks, um, for X band, we have an 80 watt buck uh, option with an X1000 uh, Norset LMB series. Uh, for KU band, we have uh, on bucks, we have our element uh, series from two to 10 watts as well as we have for Atom series 16, 20, 40, up to 80 watts. And uh, for LMBs on KU, we have the 1000H and HS1000 series. Um, uh, also to, to mention that our quad band uh, from our 1000 series is uh, on our standard configuration. Uh, on KA band, uh, we have our 12 watt element buck and for the atom series we have 25 and 40, 50 watt um, for lmbs we have our 9000 series um, as you have seen is a very uh, uh it provides an integrated solution with a wide uh, range of rf products and selections for uh different applications as well as uh, packaging uh, highly customizable uh, compatible with OpenAMIP for uh, 
some uh, modern technologies uh, we, uh, if, if we can offer. Uh, link control software for all the tools and add acquisition, um, as well as all the configuration that can be stored, and we can we're going to take a look in a second. Um, all the uh, components, drug uh customer service 24/7, and comes with a standard one-year warranty, um, extended warranty uh, provided uh, upon request. If you want to take a look in more depth on our um, um, options and specifications, we have on our online resources on our website. We have the Globe Tracker brochure and the uh, spec sheet. Uh, we also have a library for uh, Globe Tracker on how to assemble the terminal. And uh, you can find in our e-catalog all the options that we provide um, uh, as, as standard uh, options. Okay, um, now we're ready for our live demonstration. As mentioned, we have uh, today um, uh, our 40 watt atom uh, with one meter um, dish. Uh, just a second. Uh, I hope that uh, yeah, I, I think uh, you can see me. Okay, so um, in this case, um, we have a globe tracker that is packed or split into uh, three different cases. Uh, these are IATA compliant, completely rough, and I'm gonna go through all the components uh, on them. I'm gonna slide this one here. Um, all of the uh, cases comes with a handle, so it's easy to carry around, and also comes with an extended handle, so we can um, use the, uh, the this one to roll it. Uh, it comes with uh, wheels, so it's transportable easily. Uh, on the first case, um, as you can see, um, all of the um, cases comes with a packing guide so it's easy to know exactly uh, which components go in which case and uh, uh, how they're packed so they're um, packed properly and uh, they can be transported and securely I'm gonna put this aside um, all terminals comes with a pad folio um, this is uh, information that is uh, quite useful um, it comes with the four user manuals, uh, the uh, uh, system uh, assembly. With, oh, sorry, the system manual, which comes with uh, all the information about the specifications and features that the terminal has. The assembly manual, how to put it together. Uh, link controls um, manual, uh, that is uh, how to uh, use link control and how to configure, and the maintenance manual. Um, this is a uh, hard copy is, is quite handy uh, as well it comes with a USB drive uh, just in case there's something that um, in, in event of a very <laughs> uh, disastrous uh, problem you can always restore the terminal with the factory defaults put this aside um, this is the the asthma frame and I'm just going to put it uh, here just to illustrate some of the uh, major components. As you can see uh, here, uh, it comes all the uh, connections for all the rest of the electronics and components, the motors. Um, it comes with a little uh, ground connection if you require for your uh, electrical installation to uh, ground the terminal. You can use uh, this uh, little connection, bubble level, and the GPS. Uh, the compass is embedded 
inside, um, and this is the uh, azimuth plate. Uh, it has a little uh, marks on uh, the uh, um, the angle that the antenna has reference to the frame. I'm gonna turn this aside. Um, I have here uh, the AC connections. Uh, as mentioned, you have the uh, AC uh, connection and then the DC uh, connection as well. On the other side, I have the uh, all the connections RF for an external modem, the Ethernet connections for uh, monitor and control for the terminal, and in case you have um, the internal modem, you have the uh, modem port for all the traffic. Uh, power switch, the uh, external monitor, and uh, the go and stop buttons. Uh, once it's configured, you don't require to have the monitor plugged in. Uh, it will load the last configuration uh, or satellite acquired. You can just keep uh, the button pressed and it will find the satellite automatically. Once the operation is over, you can just press the button, stow button for a couple of seconds and the, the terminal is going to park. I'm going to put this a bit aside for a second. All the terminals comes with a 10 meter AC connection or a cable that is um, universal and uh, comes with three different um, uh, adapters. Depending on the uh, region, you might require a different AC plug. Uh, it comes with North American, uh, uh, the European and the UK, which are the most common. Um, the glove tracker by default comes with all these three, so you can uh, travel with them anywhere in the world or almost anywhere in the world, and uh, you will have a connection that uh, can uh, suit the uh, uh, outlets on that region. I'm gonna put this back for a second. Um, I have here uh, my coworker Steve. He's gonna work, uh, help me today. Um, for convenience on, on this demonstration. Thank you, Steve. I'm gonna put this aside for a second. The second case uh, again, uh, packing guide for all the cases. Um, this one is the reflector bag. Um, this stores all the uh, reflector pedals. And uh, you can see is carbon fiber, very light, but also very durable. Um, all of the pedals comes with a number. And the first one has some instructions how to put it together. Um, all the major components have uh, this label that uh, identifies which is the uh, terminal part number and the system ID or the serial number that we identify which terminal this belongs. The reflector bag also has that identifiable as well as all of the uh, cases and uh, all the major components. I'll we'll put this aside for a second. The elevation motor, high torque with a connection and a quick connect. We're going to put it together. We're going to see how this uh, is put, uh, how easy it is to put it together. With Veltra straps, there. Um, this is the display with also an environmental sealed uh, connection. Uh, it has a, a rubber boot to for protect it. It's uh, can survive uh, rain, and uh, it's easier to read in case there's a, a lot of sunlight. A little uh, pen, touch screen display, and it comes with a little strap, so you can just put it on your hand, and uh, it's it's easy to handle. The cord for the uh, the uh, 
display. I'm gonna put this layer on the side. I'm just gonna illustrate. Uh, this is the, uh, um, the one of the legs. Um, it's just uh, some uh, thumb, uh, thumb screws that uh, allows to lock it, and also it has uh, uh, rubber pads to for stability, as well some adjustment who will level up the frame on. Um, once it's the base frame, it's installed. I'm gonna put this aside for a second. This is the third case, and this is what we call a, the uh, RF kit, which in this case, this is the KU band kit, which has the components for uh, receive and transmit for KU. In case you require a additional band, there will be another case with all the, the KA or X band components. Instead, you will have the other two as the uh, main option or the glove tracker, and you can swap either this or uh, the other case for uh, the to switch to a different band. Okay, the RF uh, backplate. Um, this provides. Uh, this is where the uh, antenna gets mounted. And um, it also has the output of the uh, uh, buck here on the boom arm. Um, where's the uh, output of buck? Uh, it's uh, going to the uh, upper boom arm. Uh, some legs to mount it on the uh, azimuth plate. And here you have, uh, in this case, it's a 40 watt atom buck with all the connections and some filters that, uh, um, uh, that yeah, are installed, and as well the quick connect for the elevation motor. We're gonna see how this is installed. Gonna put this aside for a second. This is the upper boom arm with the feed horn. Um, also the connection for the uh, lower boom arm. And uh, this is the polarization motor, uh, all the mechanics. Uh, this this uh, polarization angle is fully automated and motorized. Uh, and all the filter, the OMT, the transit reject filter, and in this case is the, our quad band LMB. Uh, here we have our uh, lower boom arm with all the connections with colors. Um, I hope you can see it. this one is keyed, so the orientation is um, it, it's easy. There's no way you can make a mistake and install it in a different way. Both ends have the same uh, feature. So these are all the components that uh, we have on a glove tracker. I'm just gonna put this aside and we're gonna start the uh, assembly process. Um, so first of all, and I don't know if you have noticed, the baseband is in the case um, upside down. And this is intentional because uh, once you uh, get the uh, legs, just to make it easy to install the legs from the beginning and take it out of the case, instead of having to rest the frame somewhere else and then install the legs and put it on the ground, right away from the case, uh, it allows you to install the, uh, the legs. Comes with a little hook. All you have to do is insert it in the little slot, and then it has alignment pins. Just turn the knobs, and it's all locked.
that is it. Just gonna slide it and uh, see. If, thank you for helping. Well, you pull it out of the case and just put it on the ground. Okay, the next step is uncoil all the uh, cables. Uh, you will see uh, most of the connections are done on the back. That's why I installed the frame this way. The long, two long cables goes on the boomer, so those goes on the front. And I'm just gonna put these ones uh, to facing to the back. Now, the RF backplate, all you have to do is extend the two little legs. Once you, uh, it's it's sitting on the, on the uh, little holes, all you have to do is just uh, tie up the thumb screws and that's it. There's a little mechanical stop here on the front, so uh, the cables doesn't get pinched or damaged. So uh, this this prevents to any any kind of damage in, in case the elevation motor is not installed. The elevation motor it comes with uh, some alignment holes. All you have to do is uh, release the preen, just insert it. That's it. And uh, here on the back plate, all you have to do is on this uh, lining hole, just put it together, slide it in, and you tie up the knob and all good. The next thing is uh, installing the lower boom arm and the upper boom arm. Just gonna put the cap right here. Um, um, as mentioned, this one is keyed, so there's only one way to install it. Insert it, and uh, you just turn the collar until it's tight. And next you pull out the um, upper boom arm. Similar concept, it's also keyed. So there's no mistake on how you put it together. Once this all in and tight, that's good. Um, before installing the reflector, I'm gonna do the connections. Uh, all of this, connectors have uh, different sizes and different uh, pin configuration. There's no mistake which one goes where, even if you have too many connections here, they are all different. So all you have to pay attention is on the size and the uh, connector um, distribution. So you, there's, there are no mistakes. Um, one for the inclinometer, it goes right here. Uh, one for the elevation motor. And uh, this one for um, the buck. Remove the cap here on the buck and also for the MNC for the buck. The RF cables, there are two, uh, but they're color coded. Red for transmission goes on the box with a red heat shrink on the uh, on the connector. So I'm just gonna put it in, all in, and the two connections on the uh, boom arm. Normally, we recommend to uh, go around uh, the boom arm for uh, one uh, round just uh, to avoid getting caught on the feet because. The, the cables hanging can uh, get caught and cause some damage. So it's 
what we recommend. Green to green. All connection set up. Okay. Um, the reflector, we start number one. These are uh, held by four thumb screws. We don't recommend to go all the way or tighten up at this point. Make sure all four are in and aligned first. Once they're all in, then you can tighten them up. Uh, following instructions, Number two is the next one. Um, I, I want to highlight uh, these latches are uh, quick connect. Is uh, they're like 90 degrees. You push, turn 90 degrees, and then uh, lock. Once you uh, uh, once one lock, all you have to do is release 90 degrees. There's a spring that it's going to push back. That easy. Push 90 degrees and then lock. Push 90 degrees and then lock. Then we have uh, pedal number three. That easy. Um, following instructions, now the next portion is uh, the top has to be assembled first, then top goes to with bottom. So four with five. As well, 90 degrees, just push and lock. Push 90 degrees and lock. Once you have the full top, you lock and the terminal is assembled. Okay, uh, that finishes the uh, assembly portion. Now uh, we're gonna go on a uh, little demonstration uh, of what lead control looks like and how it works. Uh, we need to uh, take control again. Uh, let me share the screen again. Okay. So I'm gonna explain how link control works. Um, this is the main page and this one has all the information uh, on link control. Uh, there's an indicator on the system health if all the uh, components are detected and good um, uh, responding as well as a list of all the components that the terminal has. On the left hand side, you have all the tabs for all the uh, multiple uh, pages and features that uh, you can use. I'm going to explain to them a little bit uh, more. Then on the bottom, you have all the uh, indicators at all times, regardless of the page. And uh, if the terminal is transmitting, uh, the, uh, if the internal tuner has a lock and a modem lock, as well as uh, buttons for park and uh, stop the transmission at any time. On the top, we have uh, the link control version as well as an, uh, which terminal is, uh, uh, is uh, the, the one that it's installed and the current profile that is loaded on the configuration. The link profiles are just a, a collection of all the parameters and configuration for uh, all the components that the Globe Tracker has. On the left hand side, you have the list of the profiles, as well as on the right hand side, all the specifics for that profile that is highlighted. Not necessarily the one that it's uh, loaded. Um, it has the configuration for the modem, the satellite that it's used, as well as um, 
which kit and band and buck uh, are used. On this pointing page, you have the, uh, which is uh, the satellite that is on this profile with the target coordinates, as well as which are the current coordinates on the uh, uh, on the position on the antenna. The GPS coordinates can be overwritten or, or manually uh, added in case the GPS is not working properly. The auto acquire page is uh, the profile and uh, now it starts in motion. We're gonna have a pointing uh, exercise to illustrate all the steps that are in that black box is gonna show up. Um, as well as the button to initiate the auto acquire sequence. There are more advanced options depending if you want to enable or disable a couple of uh, uh, auto acquisition um, um, parameters. We're not going to go through them in this webinar. There's uh, uh, in this tab you have the tools uh, that uh, the Globe Tracker has. It's uh, we have a spectrum analyzer. Uh, that can help to uh, troubleshoot or verify uh, the, the um, uh, signal um, uh, on a, the given time, as well as oh, you can change all the parameters on the right hand side. Uh, there's a, a receiver or a tuner, depending on the option, and that can uh, lock to a carrier uh, that, uh, depending on the almanac, is going to show on that uh, little box. Uh, the, also, depending on the almanac, you will have a sky view which allows you to see which other satellites are nearby. Safe distance, in case you need to make sure that no obstacle is going to be in front of the antenna if you're going to transmit, as well as uh, setting a parameter for uh, to avoid having anyone harmed with uh, radio frequency. The manual pointing tab uh, is uh, the control individually, the motors, uh, polarization, elevation, and azimuth individually. You can uh, move the motors by just pressing on the arrow buttons three for uh, high speed, then mid speed, or nudges if you want to make these light, tiny adjustments once you, uh, to, to maximize the uh, level of the signal. The stop uh, button and the emergency stop button if you want to um, uh, stop the motion of any uh, motor, as well as you have a go-to, uh, you can type the angle and uh, the uh, terminal is going to move to that uh, angle. The Transmit tab, depending on your uh, option, you can have an internal modem with all the parameters. In this case, it doesn't have one. It only allows you to um, unmute the bug, and you will be reading um, the um, output of the bug. On the bottom, you have the stop. Uh, the, when you have the transmit on, it will indicate uh, with the red that the transmit is on, as well as you can turn it off there, or the stop button on the right bottom corner. Uh, the status page, you have uh, all the um, monitoring of all the voltages and uh, the readings from the sensors on the uh, glob tracker that uh, on the internal uh, electronics. This is a pointing exercise. Uh, due to convenience, we pre-record this section. And uh, I'm going to explain what happens on the acquisition um, uh, process. So from the beginning, when you press the auto acquire uh, button, uh, it will, for a few seconds, gonna detect if the current position has uh, the target. If not, it's gonna move to the calculated angles. Uh, once it it stops and tries to detect if the target signal is there, it's gonna start to uh, move. Uh, sweeping azimuth and make elevation adjustments on a wider range to try to find the target. Uh, once the target uh, is confirmed, depending on your configuration in the almanac, you might have um, a second verification to make sure that it is the correct target in case satellites they have beacons or the same reference uh, in two different satellites. So that's 
something that uh, can help to identify more accurately the target that you want. In this case, uh, for example, it detects a signal that is not uh, the target, so it's going to continue moving until it finds one right there. Once it's detected, the polarization is going to turn 90 degrees because the uh, second reference is in the opposite polarization. It turns 90 degrees, confirms this is my target, and then it will uh, start to do the peaking process. As you can see, the uh, signal is uh, increasing until it maximizes on the, uh, uh, in this case, the azimuth uh, axis. Once the, um, it's maximized, it's going to turn 90 degrees again, trying to uh, confirm I'm still on target. Once it's confirmed, yes, then it's going to turn back again on home polarization, and uh, it's going to start doing the adjustments on the elevation axis. Um, once this one finishes peaking, depending on the options on the globe tracker, uh, it might finish the auto coercition process. But one of the features that we have is uh, polarization peaking. That is, uh, not all the terminals have a feature like this, where it's going to start doing the, um, uh, it, it may take a measurement of both polarizations and uh, uh, do an adjustment trying to maximize even the polarization adjustment. So right now I, it has finished confirming, okay, I done the uh, uh, azimuth and elevation picking, and you will see that in the spectrum analyzer, the numbers are changing, which is doing a sweep on this polarization, trying to uh, determine uh, all this, the uh, suitable spots that can um, do the analysis for polarization peaking. Once it finishes on the full range, it will turn 90 degrees and uh, do the uh, the same process. Once that is finished, it will determine the best um, frequency that can do the uh, polarization uh, analysis and, and uh, difference to maximize the or, or get the best polarization angle. Um, normally without polarization peaking takes about three minutes as you can might have seen already and uh, with polarization peaking it takes about the acquisition process about five minutes. Um, this feature can be disabled if uh, you don't believe it's convenient but it's a feature that some of our customers have found uh, uh, convinced operators might not be uh, as experienced to know how to do the polarization peaking and they have to go through a satellite operator to run this process. So at this point uh, has finished the uh, uh, comparison and is going to start doing the polarization uh, adjustment. Uh, on average we have seen that this process can take up to uh, 32 dB isolation, which uh, some of the satellite operators can take up to um, the minimum required is um, uh, 30 or 28 dB. But uh, yeah, normally our um, uh, our sequence is a little bit higher than the average or, or the minimum required for some satellite operators. Uh, that is the end of our presentation. Uh, we're opening the floor for uh, questions from the audience. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Rod. If you, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to address them either at the chat or at the question box. Um, I do have a question that we got already here, Rod. So, um, what kind of maintenance does the globe tracker require? Uh, normally, uh, on, on a monthly basis, it's uh, visual inspection on the filters, uh, just clean them up, uh, making sure that no mechanics are uh, blocked or uh, clogged with uh, dust. 
just uh, wipe it down and just uh, make sure that uh, all the components are uh, are uh, can move easily. Um, if you require a little bit more information on the long run, uh, what kind of maintenance, especially if you have a larger motor, like a 1.2 meter, uh, which is, a, it's a larger dish and requires uh, more torque. The, the motor for a 1.2 meter is uh, larger and it will require to be greased uh, more often. Uh, for, um, in general, it's just making sure that all the mechanics are are uh, fit and uh, is, can be easily assembled, and uh, there are no damage or scratches uh, on the the components that are mechanically uh, fit. Uh, for even more information, uh, there's uh, for a specific configuration, uh, there we always provide the maintenance manual uh, on each glove tracker that can serve as a much better reference. All right, thank you so much, Rod. Um, let me see more questions coming in. Uh, which LMBs can I use with the Globe Tracker? Uh, our Globe Tracker are uh, compatible with uh, almost all of our Northset LMBs. Um, as mentioned on our my slides, the uh, most uh, common LMBs that uh, Nor Norsa drives the 9000 series and uh, KA or the HS1000 or uh, 1000 uh, on the KU band. Uh, those are the ones uh, who are um, uh, normally used, uh, but technically speaking, are compatible with um, uh, any of our Norsa uh, families. Okay, so another question here. Can the Globe Tracker operate in a dusty slash sandy environment? Yes. Um, in the maintenance manual mentions that probably the main, uh, the uh, frequency of uh, the maintenance should be uh, more often, especially because the sand uh, is going to clog the uh, filters uh, very quick. So that will require to follow a uh, procedure just to clean up all the mechanics and all the joints, uh, making sure that are free of dust and are not going to damage any of the uh, um, of, of the metal and the joints, making sure that it, it's cool. But yeah, there, we have a lot of customers that they use it on a very harsh environment. Uh, sometimes comes back for maintenance and uh, like heavy maintenance, and yeah, they're all covered in dust. Nothing that a uh, just a quick um, uh, wiping it with a cloth and making sure that it's uh, the filters are okay uh, is is uh, more than enough. But yes, it can be used in very sandy environments. Okay, thank you, Rod. Um, another question here: Can we use different box sizes with the Globe Tracker? Uh, yes, um, on, at the beginning of my presentation, I mentioned the options for all the bands that we have, uh, from 2 watts up to 80 watts uh, on KU, uh, 12 to 50 in KA. Um, uh, we have the element and atom uh, families that are compatible with the glove trackers. Uh, depending on what is your requirements, you, we might be able to fit it in. Even if you have a special requirements, uh, you can talk to uh, Norset uh, representatives and they will be able to help out if you require a additional uh, requirement. Okay, thank you for answering that, Rod. Um, we still have time for a couple more questions very quickly here. What are the main differences between the Globe Tracker and the Wayfarer? Well, uh, some of the Wayfarers are automated, uh, the, the Wayfarer automated, and, uh, but uh, one of the uh, differentiators is uh, the Wayfarer is meant for more commercial use. Uh, the components might not be as durable as the Globe Tracker, 
um, also Job Tracker is certified with uh, military standards for environmentally survival and uh, um, also uh, all the com uh, components are, are uh, rugged and durable. Uh, that's one of the key differentiators that um, it's suitable for military applications where the wafer is uh, mostly on the commercial side. Uh, also, wafers can um, they cannot have an in integrated modem, which the Globe Trucker allows to have one as, as part of the options. And um, um, uh, but they are quite quite similar in functionality, but not um, on the specifications. All right, thank you so much, Rod. Um, next one here. <clears throat> if I don't want to use the handheld display, how can I connect my laptop remotely to view or control the terminal? So, uh, as mentioned, uh, it has an MNC port Ethernet. Um, you can remote into the internal computer as a um, uh, remote connection, or you can install on a separate uh, laptop a uh, link a uh, client of link control, and it's going to interact with the internal computer that the club tracker uh, runs all the components and it's constantly monitoring at all times. Okay, let me see <clears throat> if anyone has. Any other questions here? Okay, one coming up here. Uh, what are the advantages of having an integrated modem in the Globe Tracker? Uh, first of all, is well, you don't, will not require to have an additional case or packet somewhere uh, the external modem. Uh, certainly, that might be an advantage that it's incorporated as well. Uh, fewer cables to uh, connect, um, you, you will have or require a RF co connections to from the modem to the globe tracker. Um, but also one of the features is link control can control a lot of the parameters that the modem has. So as mentioned in the transmit tab, uh, on this demonstration, it has only uh, to uh, unmute the buck and uh, get the readings, but if you have an integrated modem, you will have, uh, or you can change the settings uh, on the uh, on the internal modem uh, for frequency and uh, symbol rate and all, all those parameters that the modem has can be controlled and stored in a link profile through Link Pro. Okay, <clears throat> thank you so much, Rod. And uh, with that, we want to be respectful to your schedules today. We know we're always busy and on the on the go. So um, if you have any other immediate questions or specific requests, don't hesitate to reach us at sales at norset.com or through the contact form in our website. On behalf of Norset, I would like to thank Rodrigo for the presentation and all of you who joined us today. So keep your eyes peeled on Facebook and Twitter for the next webinars and product launches. And thank you again for attending. See you next time.